Enterovirus infections, caused by viruses belonging to the enterovirus genus, have been recognized for many years, but the first specific enterovirus, poliovirus, was identified in 1908 by Carl Landsteiner and Erwin Popper. However, the broader family of enteroviruses, which includes Coxsackie viruses, echoviruses, and newer numbered enteroviruses, started to be identified and classified in the mid-20th century as laboratory techniques improved. These viruses are responsible for a wide range of diseases, from minor flu-like illness to severe conditions like poliomyelitis. The discovery and classification of enteroviruses have evolved over time with advances in virology and molecular biology. Enterovirus infections are transmitted among humans through several routes, with the fecal-oral pathway being the most common. This transmission occurs when the virus, shed in the feces of an infected individual, contaminates hands, surfaces, water, or food, and is subsequently ingested by another person. This mode of transmission is particularly prevalent in regions where sanitation and hygiene are compromised. In addition to the fecal-oral route, enteroviruses can also spread through respiratory aerosols. This happens when an infected person coughs or sneezes, expelling droplets that contain the virus into the air. These droplets can then be inhaled by nearby individuals, leading to infection. This pathway is especially relevant for enteroviruses that manifest with respiratory symptoms. Direct contact with an infected individual, such as through touching or shaking hands, presents another route of transmission. If the hands are not washed after such contact and the virus is then brought into contact with the mouth, nose, or eyes, it can lead to infection. Similarly, fomites, or objects and surfaces contaminated with the virus, can serve as a vector for transmission. Touching these contaminated surfaces followed by touching the face can facilitate the entry of the virus into the body. Vertical transmission, though less common, can occur when a pregnant woman passes the virus to her baby during delivery. This can result in neonatal enterovirus infection, which, although rare, can be severe. Once inside the body, enteroviruses initially replicate in the gastrointestinal or respiratory tract depending on the virus and its preferred replication site. However, these viruses can sometimes disseminate to other parts of the body, potentially causing more serious conditions such as meningitis, encephalitis, or myocarditis. The ability of enteroviruses to infect a wide range of cell types and tissues underlies the broad spectrum of diseases they can cause. Enterovirus infections encompass a broad spectrum of symptoms due to the diverse viruses within the enterovirus genus, capable of infecting different body tissues and organs. These infections can be asymptomatic or range from mild to severe in nature, often influenced by the type of enterovirus, the individual's age, and their immune system's strength. For many, enterovirus infections present mild symptoms similar to those seen in other viral illnesses. Individuals may experience fever, runny nose, coughing, sneezing, skin rashes, mouth blisters known as herpangina, and muscle aches. Such mild presentations often do not require specific medical intervention and tend to resolve on their own. A notable manifestation of enterovirus infection is hand, foot, and mouth disease, HFMD, primarily caused by Coxsackie virus A16 and enterovirus A71. HFMD is characterized by a combination of fever, painful sores in the mouth, and a distinctive rash with blisters on the hands, feet, buttocks, and sometimes legs, primarily affecting children. However, enterovirus infections can lead to more severe conditions in certain cases. Meningitis, an inflammation of the brain and spinal cord's protective membranes, presents symptoms such as fever, headache, a stiff neck, and light sensitivity. Encephalitis, or brain inflammation, causes fever, headache, confusion, and seizures, posing a risk of lasting neurological damage. Myocarditis involves the inflammation of the heart muscle, leading to chest pain, shortness of breath, and heart rhythm irregularities. Acute flaccid myelitis AFM, is a rare but serious condition affecting the nervous system, particularly the spinal cord, resulting in weakness, loss of muscle tone, and decreased reflexes in the arms or legs. Enteroviruses can also cause respiratory illnesses, ranging from common cold symptoms to more severe conditions like pneumonia. Symptoms can include coughing, 
wheezing, and difficulty breathing, especially in individuals with pre-existing respiratory conditions. In neonates, enterovirus infection can be particularly severe, sometimes transmitted from mother to child during birth. Such infections can lead to life-threatening conditions for the infant, including sepsis-like illness, myocarditis, and hepatitis, necessitating prompt medical attention. While the majority of enterovirus infections are self-limiting, requiring no specific treatment, severe cases, especially those affecting the central nervous system or heart, may require hospitalization. The wide range of potential symptoms underscores the importance of vigilance and medical consultation for severe or unusual presentations. Treatment for enterovirus infections is centered around symptom management and supportive care, as specific antiviral therapies for most enteroviruses are currently unavailable. The approach to managing these infections is tailored to the severity of the symptoms and the particular enterovirus involved emphasizing the body's need to recover while mitigating discomfort and preventing complications. For individuals experiencing mild enterovirus infections, the emphasis is on maintaining hydration, especially critical if fever, vomiting, or diarrhea are present. Oral rehydration solutions or ample fluid intake can help keep the body adequately hydrated. Over-the-counter pain relievers and fever reducers, such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen, are recommended for alleviating pain and fever, with a note of caution against the use of aspirin in children due to the risk of RISE syndrome. Ensuring sufficient rest is also vital, as it supports the immune system's capacity to combat the virus. In cases where enterovirus infections become severe, leading to conditions such as meningitis, encephalitis, myocarditis, or acute flaccid myelitis, hospitalization may be necessary. Treatment in a hospital setting can include the administration of intravenous fluids to prevent dehydration and maintain electrolyte balance, along with medications to address specific symptoms like pain and fever. For those suffering from significant respiratory distress, oxygen therapy or even mechanical ventilation might be required. The use of corticosteroids to reduce inflammation is considered on a case-by-case -case basis, reflecting the clinical nuances of each situation. In particularly severe instances or for certain types of enterovirus infections, treatments such as immunoglobulin therapy might be explored. Given the absence of a vaccine for most enteroviruses, excluding poliovirus, preventive measures play a crucial role in curbing the spread of these infections. Regular hand washing with soap and water, avoiding close contact with those who are infected, and the diligent cleaning and disinfecting of frequently touched surfaces are key strategies for prevention. The approach to managing enterovirus infections underscores the importance of supportive care and symptom relief in the absence of targeted antiviral treatments. Individuals with severe symptoms or underlying health conditions are encouraged to seek medical advice, allowing healthcare providers to offer tailored treatment plans that address the unique aspects of each enterovirus infection.